Hello ladies and gentlemen, tubers and groovers, and welcome to the phenomenon that is Take the Fear Out the Gear with me, Jason Bangers. And me, Mr Chumley Warner. It's not a phenomenon, but we like to say that. It's fun, isn't it? Let's have a bit of fun. So uh, today we're talking about this wonderful Morantz cassette machine, which belongs to the one and only Mr Chumley Warner. And as he explained some things about it, I shall do some close-ups for you. Right, just to give you some background, this is like a portable cassette recorder so you can have it running off batteries or you can run it as we are at the moment we're running it off a power supply uh, this was made in 1985 ish so it's quite old uh, we've replaced the belts on it thank you for your help Alan Alan and uh, it's one of the best sort of portable machines for taking out into the field recording onto and it's got an amazing amount of functions uh, we'll, we'll point some out now it's gorgeous as well, not to mention if I, sexy as if hell. I hit that button there, I don't. Oh, that that brings up the lights on the VU right. when we're when we're in play mode. Okay. Uh, if I lift the, this flap here, yeah, because I couldn't film that because the reflection off on the, the front there. Right. You've got oh, yes. you've got uh, like a memory function on the reel to reel we talked about, so it will find a memory spot. You have got an MPX filter there. And then you've got your three tape types, normal, chrome and metal. And then you've actually got, amazingly, Dolby B and DBX noise reduction. Wow. Pitch control and bias control for your tape. Cool. And then on the top you've got your tape counter, you've got all your controls, and you've got a pause, forward, reverse, play, record, what? stop, eject. So the so controls inside, you want to... Yeah, well, what we'll do now, we'll come onto the front panel. We've mm -hmm. described the top here. Uh, what you've got is, you've got a record volume here. It's a bit dark, we should have lit that, but never mind. Uh, yeah, record volume left and right. You've got your two VU meters for your stereo. I'll tell you what I can do with that. I can put it in pause mode, press play, and then if we hit this button here... You see, oh, look at that! Beautiful. The VU meters light up, so you've got left and right channel. Plus, uh, this one also acts as like a battery level for yeah, your battery. That's uh, sexy stuff, dude. And then when you're sexy. recording, you've also got uh, you got a limiter on here. Just there, there's a limiter button you can put in. Uh, that's your button for your battery level stroke VU meters. Uh, that's to go. That's a monitor button, so you can have it on input or playback. Headphone level, headphone socket. It's compact, isn't it? It's amazing. And then uh, you can't see, but around this side here, you've got phonos in and out. I think you've got a, a five pin DIN for a remote. And you've got quarter inch jack sockets uh, for microphone input. That was about all that. So essentially, then, this would have been used as a field recording device, wouldn't it? Exactly. So this is sort of like a, the next generation on for your old reel-to-reels like the Ewers and that. Yeah. Oops. And uh, this is like the cassette version of it. Plus, it's also got, as an added bonus, you've got a built-in speaker. So if you're out in the field and you just want to check you've recorded something... Cross-reference. That works as well. And That, that is very nice. And it's... Uh, so when... Uh, when Alan helped me do all the belts inside and we took it apart, it's got all brass wheels and cogs and everything. It's really nicely made. Very nicely so made. So were the belts, the belts are obviously shot on it, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Tr trouble is, Tubes, is with, with, with any old tape machine or old reel-to-reel -reel machine, you got to remember now they would have been sat around for an awful long time. And one thing you can guarantee is that the belts that drive the fast-forward and rewind will be shot. Sometimes... They're separate to the drive belt. Sometimes the drive belt might still work, but but one or t'other, and, and it goes all sticky and horrible. You just got to replace them, and that's not usually too bad. But I imagine on this, it was probably quite fiddly because it's got so much inside it, isn't it? It's very compact. Yeah, it, it was. It was okay actually. It's, they've designed it nicely, so it's not too tricky to get the new belts on. Mm. Uh, got the belts off eBay. I think they're around ten or fifteen pounds. So it wasn't too much. That's all right, it's well worth it to get that up yeah. and running. Yeah, and then you've got a sort of a brand new machine. Well, we have a load of desktop sort of tape machines for you as well. We also got like this, but reel to reel, so like some U-Hers. We haven't got any Nagras, unfortunately, because they're asking too much damn money for them. 
Yeah, we should have bought one earlier, didn't we? A few years ago when they weren't too much money. I've just remembered what I saw that £7,000 price tag on. It was a Nagra. They're actually making digital Nagra machines now with the same fronts. Oh, okay. They look exactly the same, but they've got hard drive in them. And oh, okay. And, and there's a second hand one for £7,000. Ooh. <laughs> That's an awful <laughs> lot of money. Um, right, so have we played anything on it yet, have we? No, what should we play? I think, should we? Do you want to give them a little background about I, what we're playing? Right. <laughs> so I was about to play something that we recorded, I think, in about 1991, 90, 91, is that about right? 92? Yeah, the, yeah, well, yeah. we, um, start, we started about 1991, and I think it was out by 92, wasn't it? Yeah, we were in a band called Blade Chain, and... Um, if I put this roughly where my mush is, you should be able to see that. And uh, yeah, we had this on um, we had this on the shelves in record shops. How cool was that? I mean, we were just we were just amazed because I could go in a shop and I could literally open it up and show them this, and I'd uh, say, look, uh, yeah, it's definitely us. And yeah, it was great great times. Anyway. So this is our album that we made called Suffering Silence. So to save any worries about copyright issues on music, which we've been battling with a little bit just lately, we're going to play our own stuff. That's how you get around copyright. Go on inside, hit play, let's have a listen. Let's press the button, shall we? What song are we playing, by the way? The same thing, that's the second one on the album. Uh, Yeah, okay. And this illusion this was recorded on a um, Fostec 16 track. Yeah, E16. Soundcraft desk. Me drums, in bass, gem on vocals, Kev Butcher on guitar. Steve Trim on keyboards here and there, I think. No, oh, not on this album, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was he? And Jem, and Jem's on keyboards as well. Good jumping. <laughs> this time. Loads of harmonies. And everyone used to scream. Yeah. There was no harmonies on that bit. This and that. Now that's cassette for you. That is as old as the eels. Um, I have to confess though, that is a brand new and unplayed tape that Simon actually said he found a few that, that were left in a box, you know, from the sales. And uh, I didn't even know I still had mine. I said, oh, I'd love one if you got one. And he's given it to me. And ironically, finding this one, we found my old one. <laughs> What's the chances of that, honestly? And ironically, Simon actually found one of these cassettes for sale on eBay. Yeah, Someone that was amazing. was selling a play chain album on eBay. Um, wanted a tenner for it, didn't he? Yeah, I'd buy it myself, but it's just nice to see it on eBay. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was really good. We should have contacted him. But um, any any Blade Chain fans out there, see if you can let us know what's, what songs had the wind chimes on. If you don't know what they are, then you're not going to have a clue, but answers. <laughs> so what we might do, Tubes, seeing as we did record it, and Simon engineered that particular record, um, if Simon can get his... Uh, Fostec 16 track out one day and we find the master tape we may be able to bring it in here hook it all up and play it back for you that would be nice wouldn't it that, great that tape hasn't seen the light of day for a long time and big uh, thank you to Chris Secker who actually mixed it for us mentioned to Chris Secker yeah yeah fantastic yeah. job great uh, sound engineer superb bloke as well thanks yeah. Chris um, so all that remains for us to say is thanks for watching this episode of Take the Fear Out of Gear from me Jason Bangs And for me, Mr. Chumley Warner. Stay safe, stay cool. We'll see you next time, guys. Toodaloo.